That's my squad, that's my team, go get that ring, yeah. On that off-season grind, training camp gotta shine, put in work, mud and dirt, one game at a time. One thing I know, we gon' go hard, tap on the squad, the team is so raw, look out for Quan if you running the ball, Jerry McCoy, Jason Pia Paul. We go hard, go Bucks, that's my squad, go Bucks, that's my team, go Bucks, get that ring, go Bucks. Black ball cap, 1-3, reppin' Mikey A 1-3 for my QB Play action when he drop back and hit D. Jackson for the long pass Fire them cannons in the Ray J, no team is hanging with us Yeah, lead teams in the dust that can handle the rush uh. Bust you for talking that smack, your team getting crushed Yeah, Levante, Ronald Jones Hard grease, Cameron Brake We on go, no breaks Humphreys got win Marpet, no expense. Yeah. OJ, Donovan, Donovan. Winston, Charles Sims. Brent Grimes, we on the grind. The South is ours. Watch a sign, making money moves, eating double U's in a double move, make them triple shoes. Go hard, yeah. go Bucks, that's my squad. Go Bucks, that's my team. Go Bucks, get that ring. Go Bucks, we go hard. Go Bucks, that's my squad. Go Bucks, that's my team. Go Bucks, get that ring. Go Bucks. 813 all day. Tampa Bay, B U C C A N E E R S. Go Bucks! Tampa Bay on the rise. We're coming for that ring, we're coming for that trophy. Super Bowl 2018. We rolling? You know how I'll start this. As I always ask, is this thing rolling? Is this thing rolling? Welcome, well, welcome back, everybody, to BucksReport.com with your host, Mr. Buccaneer Blake himself. Um, you can't say Bucks without Bucks Report. We put the B in Bucks. Um, of course, uh, you know, welcome everybody checking me out again with a Thursday's edition. Got a little special treat for y'all today. I get to do my favorite talk part, uh, Buccaneer Blake breakdown and uh, things of that nature. <clears throat> so uh, we'll start the show off as we always do. Um, make sure you guys give a shout out to uh, the sponsors of this show, Bucks Report, and then you know check check everybody out at BucksReport.com. If you want to check me out at Buck and Blake Sports, my website. Um, check me out at Buck and Blake on Twitter, Buck and Blake Sports IG, uh, Snapchat, and all that stuff. I'm all over there. Same as Bucks Report. Um, give a shout out to the Sports Arena by L. Bushman, Christian. Jawan, Eric Wilson, and Chris Settle, and the Rat Pack Sports Show, Mr. Derek Jones. Check those guys out. Uh, give a special shout out to the legendary New York man, Jay Bucks himself. <clears throat> um, like I said, as always, this is a great group of guys. They put in a lot of work putting this together to give you guys constant updates, uh, especially articles with myself. I feel like I'm writing uh, town papers again, you know, <clears throat> you know, with Jay and, and, and everybody giving out. Um, you know, assignments and stuff to everybody, the articles, the right. So, and it's pretty exciting. It keeps you on your toes and, and figuring out, you know, what's going on with the team and injuries and stuff. There's never a dull moment. There's always information to put out to people. As you know, we all don't have, uh, you know, uh, time in our schedule to go out and figure out things for ourselves. Uh, something else to put out, too. Um, uh, there's a raffle for a signed Quan Alexander jersey. Uh, I will post the photos of it and everything. It's signed with a, a certification stamp on there i couldn't quite figure out how to get it on here um to post oh, actually i could figure that out i actually figured it out now but <clears throat> uh, i'll put that up for you guys to view and stuff like that. so it's only 20 25 tickets available and they're 20 dollars a ticket you can purchase as many as you want to up your chances but it's a signed official uh, quan alexander jersey signed by him with certification of authenticity um, and there's only 25, so you better hurry up. It only cost $20. You'll spend over $150 for his jersey, and then you, the jersey you don't even get a signature. So, I mean, if you want to sit around and act like you don't want it or need it, that's on you because they're probably going to go by pretty quick. Um, contact you want to uh, 
get up with is Keith Larson or myself. You can contact me at uh, Buck and Blake Sports at gmail.com, and I'll pass over all the information to him. Or you can contact me here privately on Facebook or one of my social media sites, and we'll get talk to you about that. I'm not going to leave you hanging in the loop. But uh, Keith Larson is the one you want to go to for that. Uh, moving on. Uh, of course, rep where you're from, what section you sit in, and things like that. Uh, and we'll interact with you guys the whole time I'm here live, uh, and we can go on with stuff like that. So, uh, oh, that's it. Have a break at 9 p.m. Okay. Um, so, we're going to start off with my uh, line of beat there. Uh, let's start off with the Bucks, Bucks versus Saints recap. What did you like? What didn't you like? And uh, what do you think the breaking point? was in that game uh, so let's talk about that the bucks and saint saints game recap i mean what do you guys think um well i i, I like that uh the uh monkey was calling plays and um <clears throat> it's new play calling very aggressive play calling uh, i'm thinking i'm not sure if it was much fitzpatrick or was the play call i mean with the route combinations um, it seems like that's what the play call was, the attack. I told you last week with the Saints, they have pretty slow linebackers so we could take advantage of them. <clears throat> um, Eagles as well. Um, Akeem, uh, Jordan Hicks is pretty athletic linebacker. I think we could take advantage of them too with our tight ends and our uh, <clears throat> yeah, with our tight ends and running backs and stuff like that. I don't know if Ryan Jones is healthy and, and all that. Uh, get mixed up with those guys and uh, definitely be. I know our tight ends can uh, match up well against them. And uh, get some favorable matchups against them, so I, I think so. We we can we got a definite um, advantage there. Uh, the defense, their defensive line, is going to be pretty tough. I mean, I'm talking about the Saints. Um, their defensive line, you know, had the rookie. Um, I forgot his name from Texas. UTEP, uh, it'll come to me when I'm not thinking about it. And Cameron Jordan, and I think the offensive line fared well. The, the greatest stat of that game wasn't just the 40 points. It was the fact that we gave up um, no, 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 no sacks that game. Um, oh, yeah, Bucks Report, thank you. Uh, I'm going to give a shout-out to Chris at Liz. Chris, Chris Shaw over at Liz. Check him out at the St. Pete store, 8004. Contact Chris Shaw. His information is all over everywhere, and uh, <clears throat> he'll probably be in the stream and talking to you guys. So please make sure to go out to St. Pete store, eight, store lids, 8004, and give him a holler and uh, mention my name or uh, Bucks Report, and he'll make sure to take care of you. Um, but I like the aggressive play calling in the Saints game. Um yeah, and Dirk not calling plays definitely. I agree with you on that. Um, um, ooh, Rasul Salam, if I pronounced that right, Rasul. Um, he did not call plays. It was very aggressive play, very different. That's why people are like, where is this offense at? And you know what the crazy part about that was? Not one player on offense is a player, a different player that was that wasn't here last year. Deshaun Jackson was here last year. Mike Evans was here last year. OJ Howard was here last year. Cameron Brait was here last year. The entire five offensive linemen were here last year. So it wasn't like you changed anything. So the only thing that you changed was was play calling and continuity. That's the only thing that changed from, from that offense from last year to this year. That's the only thing that changed was play calling. And that's why I was saying on Facebook earlier, arguing about, oh, I need to cut this and cut that. I'm like, dude, honestly, if you put the people in the right position, you can get better results than what we were having. And, and look what happened. You put up 48 points. We gave up 40. But that's Drew Brees and the Saints and a pass-happy offense to begin with. Drew Brees is going to do that to most teams, especially a team where we're so young in the secondary. So I don't really know what much you were going to expect. Uh, very young corners to do very young corners and young safeties my, minus Chris Conte against a Hall of Fame quarterback we got the win, be grateful everybody just, I know everybody wants perfection but you gotta be honest with yourself too um, let me look at let me look at some of the stuff, that tie though, don't hate on that tie, who was that, Keith, that's you don't hate on that tie. You see, you see why the, the, the Tar Heels matching that up. Got to represent. They own two right now out there in the ACC. So, and they're going through hurricanes, which I'm used to dealing with that. Going through that every year as a young kid and going to school out there and dealing with that every year. Having my games canceled every Saturday because of of uh, <clears throat> of rain. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Um. Who was that? Tony. 
Tony Golf, we have an issue at defensive coordinator. I wouldn't really say not yet, Tony. Um, like I said, again, it's, it's just true. Oh, you love the tie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't say yet. Like I said, that's Drew Brees. I mean, if you watch the game, he's always making audibles, and he's going to find a little Mitch match and all that. So it's really not coordinated. I think he called the correct defensive plays, uh, correct defense. And I, these guys just weren't coming up well, to make the plays, and, and, and the Saints were just chopping us up. But that's what Drew Brees does to everybody. So I wouldn't be surprised with that. Um, we're going to beat the Amigos, Buccaneers, Eagles. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but of course, if if Mike Smith doesn't get it uh, done, Tony, then I agree with you. Uh, he's he's gonna be the problem and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, they got so much anger after a win, Keith. Uh, uh, there's so much anger, like I, I don't know. It's just they're finding reasons to complain. And then again, I have to learn to separate myself from people who are just saying anything versus people that are actually uh, know what's going on with the game. So that's something I got to deal with myself. Uh, he goes prevent way too much. Yeah, too early. <laughs> um, we were kind of our own at the end of the game. That was kind of on us because we got to kind of ice the game on offense. We ran the ball very exceptionally well at the beginning of the game, which indeed opened up the passing game everybody enjoyed. Um, but we have to run the ball at the end of the game when everybody knows we're going to run the ball and get those first downs so you not have to be put in those um, <clears throat> situations. And, yeah, I kind of knew we were going to miss that field goal at the end. I just kind of knew it's Bucks football. We can't just coast into an easy win. But the ball was tipped. That wasn't Castan uh, Castaneda's fault. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, so that was kind of missed. Otherwise, now he's been perfect. No complaints there from me. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, 40 to tw uh, 24 with eight minutes left. Yeah, I, I saw, like I said, that's on us. We had a chance to ice that game, Tony, on offense. I mean, you can't really blame it all on defense. I mean, if you play aggressive and then you get beat for a quick touchdown, then you're left with a lot of time left. And I think that's what he's thinking. You keep everything in front of you. You come up and make the tackle. You rely on your defense to get pressure, force some incompletions, get some sacks. It's, it's all in the one. Um, I, when you say play calling, I mean, he can only call the plays pretty much. The players have to make the plays, too. So the coordinator can't call the plays and make the plays. So there's a huge difference, I mean, in that. But, I mean, it is what it is. Um, when is Jameis Winston bed bug playing foot bed bug? I don't know what you mean by that, uh, Jacob Kearns. Um Brooks report says we could have iced that game with the field goal. Yep. Could have iced that game with a field goal or a first down by taking the foot off the neck defensively against Breeze is not a good idea, in my opinion. Yep. The I field goal would have wouldn't have put us in that situation. Like I said, you just can't blame it on a defensive coordinator. Field goal would have definitely ended it. We were up two scores and that would have made it three, but definitely would have been the icing on the cake. But like I said before, <laughs> the Buccaneers, we can't ever coast in for a win. Uh, aggressive offense, passive defense. I wouldn't, Tony, I wouldn't call it. I mean, if you're only talking about the last half of the game, um, passive defense, then, yeah, when you're up three scores, yeah, you do play passive a little bit. You keep everything in front of you, and you make the tackle, and you let the clock run. That's what you're supposed to do. And you don't get beat in man coverage like the Bears did uh, against the Packers, prime example. You played it, you played aggressive and you got beat, you got torched, and it said when you're up. So, again, you can make the calls, but the players have to make the plays. Um, and in the whole game, he, he played a lot of man coverage. He sent a lot of blitzes. Like I said, you can't base the whole game off of the last last plays of the last drive in the fourth, last drives with eight minutes left, as you said. At that point, you're supposed to be milking time and milking the clock. That's what you're supposed to do when you're up. Uh, 40, 48 or 40, 48 to 24 is what you're supposed to do is milk the clock um, with eight minutes left. And like I said, the field goal would have would have ended. The, we wouldn't even be having this conversation had he hit the field goal. Um, and then had we been able to run the ball when we needed to run the ball and get a first down or two first downs and eat up two more minutes of the clock. Like I said, it's not just all on the defense, but I get what you're saying. 
But a lot of that game, he did not play passive. There's a lot of blitzes, and um, and we're gonna look at tape together. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the the topic of the day. We're gonna watch film together, and I get to do my breakdowns on the tape. I'm not going through the whole film. I find a lot of plays on stuff when people talk about players and what they do. Excuse me, I got a burp. It won't come out. A lot of stuff that the players do or they don't do or what effect that they hell have because you're only looking at the overall result of the play and not seeing everything that's going on that's transpiring in between that. Um, oh, when is Jameis? Yeah, he'll be back week four. Um, what are talking about? Uh, um, yeah, playing passing. So he did send a lot of blitzes. Drew Brees, of course, sniffed it out and made audibles and got the balls deep and stuff like that. I mean, it's just what this what happens when you play a franchise quarterback. So, I mean, to go all like panicking, we won the game. Are there things we need to work at? Absolutely. You can say that for any team, even if they won 40, 40 points. That doesn't mean they did everything right. Could mean the team did every the plane we played against did everything wrong. I mean, I said, be happy we got the win against a division rival. We were the biggest underdogs of the week. We'd take it and stride, and let's move forward and keep getting better. I'm not satisfied with it, no, but I'll take the win because a lot of people last year got wins that they shouldn't have gotten against us, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. We made one more play than they did, and you know what play made the difference in that game? And to me, that was the, that was the breaking point. The breaking point was the was the fumble caused by Vernon Hargraves, which was end up picking up, picked up, and returned back for a touchdown by Justin Evans. That took the air out of the Saints, and that is your breaking point in the game was the fumble for a touchdown. It wasn't just a fumble; it was a fumble for a touchdown, and uh, that's what it is. And like I said, you can can't call them passive when you're making plays like that in in a critical point of the game. Again, that play turned the game around. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be argumentative with it. I appreciate different opinion matters of opinion. I enjoy that. It makes a conversation great when <clears throat> people got two points of view. But you got to, like I said, I don't know how much of that you got to really look at. As you know, you're looking at a fan and you're looking at somebody like me who looks at the totality of everything in the game later on. And I break down a lot of the tape, uh, pass protections, things like that, and seeing what's going on and why the ball was thrown so early and stuff like that. I, get, I look at stuff like that. But you can't really see that <clears throat> from – well, we're sitting at home, watch the tape. You're only focused on the quarterback, and you don't get to see receivers and things like that. But there's a lot of things that go on. Uh, am I missing any comments here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me scroll up. I'm sorry. Uh, Sean Jackson was limited in practice. Oh, you talking about the injuries? Yeah, we'll get to that. <clears throat> and the margin of victory. Uh, he did He did hang tough. Dude is going to be special. I missed part of that conversation. Let me scroll down. Drew Brees picked on Carlton Davis the whole game, and in my opinion, Davis played well. I agree, Jay. Played well. You got picked on. You playing the first game. You playing against a Hall of Famer. You got a lot to learn, and that's it. Everybody's like, oh, he got torch. Oh, he got this. Oh, whatever. I mean, whatever. Marcus Lattimore, everybody was riding him like a rodeo show, and what happened to him? Like I said, give or take, game situations and stuff like that, but um, what's the status of DJ? Uh, it's the ultimate team game. It is. It's the ultimate team. It's not one guy. How do you think if the rookies will hold up this Saturday? Against the Eagles, they'll be fine. And we'll go on to tape about that. Uh, Justice, we'll, we'll go on tape about that. I'm going to go on uh, watch game tape about what they're going to see out there. Uh, tell everyone Winston's our QB. Winston, Winston is our QB. Justice. I mean, uh, Justice uh, won. All right. I got through all you guys' comments. Uh, Carlton Davis got torched, but he played well. Yeah, he got torched. We're going to go on. I actually got that play uh, ready up for that, uh, Jay. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, too. All right. Um, <clears throat> of course, we'll go on to this. Hargraves, Jackson, JPP, and Grimes injury. I'm going to start with Grimes, the old man. Um, Grimes' injury is an inter interesting one. Fortunately for me, never in my time of playing, both high school and beyond, Um. I've never had a groin injury, but the guys that I do know that didn't that have groin injuries, um, they, uh, they they usually don't go away till you stop playing. You stop constantly running on it. I don't know how bad the groin is. Stretch, pull, whatever it is, it's very painful and very uncomfortable. 
and being in a position where you got to constantly turn your hips and stuff like that, um, <clears throat> that's, that's, that's just going to be tough for him. Uh, so that's got, that ought to be interesting. So we'll see how that turns out. Uh, what I say? Hargrave is going to be out for the season or at least, you know, maybe eight plus weeks. Uh, was playing very well at the nickel spot. is thriving and his confidence levels go up. It's very sad to see him go down. And, I, you know, it kind of hurts me to see people, you know, keep saying stuff about him like that. And then I made it. We were talking to this guy online. You know, he, he, kind of, he understood where and I understood where he was coming from. He understood where I was coming from. Um, no corner in this league is going to be shut down or perfect cover for more than four seconds. And if there is, please name them. And I'll tell you, you're right. <clears throat> um, but. And there are and do they need does he need to work get get better? Yeah, he needs to get better. I ain't gonna argue with that. But nobody in our secondary played well with that much time to throw. Uh, it's just it's just all it's like I said, it's, it's like Keith said, it's a team game. You can't just beat somebody with corners and no defensive line. You can't just beat somebody with defensive line and no corners. It it all it all plays in the one. Everybody when one person's job is good, it makes somebody else's job easier. And that rotates to things beyond football. Uh, Jay says he pulled mine. It wasn't right for two months. And it probably because you had to sit out, right? You had to not do anything. You're just going to keep on hurting it. Um, Matthew says Fitz said he's just a caretaker. He knows Winston's the QB. He was going to retire. And then we got him to come back. He went to Tampa Bay. We talked, whoever talked him into it. And he's been great here. Uh, Kids love it here. Families having a good time here. Um, that's not a week or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his family loves it here, and he knows his role here. So you know, everybody wants to say, "Oh, just get rid of Winston and go with Fitzpatrick." I mean, go get yeah, go with Fitzpatrick. He's thirty-five years old, man. Like, you seriously going to put your franchise up for that? Thank goodness you don't own the team. Um, we might be in trouble. I ain't saying I wish bad things against him. I just want people to put things in perspective. Winston's not bad. Uh, did he make poor, horrible decisions? Yeah, but he's setting some ridiculous records. And uh, <clears throat> and, he, and, and then preseason, him and Fitzpatrick. Well, actually, Winston didn't play bad at all. A preseason game. Um, Fitz had a bad game, that second preseason game. And everybody, you know, crowned Winston King after one game. And then just like this, you crowned a Fitzpatrick King after one game. I mean, I'm rooting for the guy. I'm not rooting against anybody. I don't wish bad on him. Um, like I said, he's our franchise, and everybody knows that. Fitzpatrick knows that. Everybody's learning their roles here, and we're trying to break that consistent thing of being inconsistent. We're trying to change that up now. Again, if you're just joining, I'm Buccaneer Blake, um, Buck and Blake Sports, reporting live out of um, BucksReport.com. We put the B in Bucks, so shout out where you're from if you're from out of town reps i saw somebody here and from alaska i was born in anchorage and later till i was 12 i was raised in north carolina by my father when my parents split uh played football there and moved down here and i just spent time in philadelphia i'm very familiar with the eagles and moved down here to uh tampa bay area <clears throat> uh let's move on to the next topic here oh i didn't get to jpp jpp practice today uh, Jackson, they say full participation today. Uh, Jackson had a shoulder and concussion. Um, JPP, I think it was a knee issue. He should be fine. Uh, jog it out on the <clears throat> on the treadmill or the bike and <clears throat> get that right. Uh, where are we at? So, what is the game plan against the Eagles? Uh, the the Bucks played my game plan right. I said Peyton Barber was going to be the X factor. Peyton Barber was the X factor in moving the ball. Why well, you say that before Fitzpatrick threw for 417 yards, five total touchdowns, four passing. The reason I say Peyton Barber is the X factor is because those runs that he was getting set everything up. And you'll see on the tape from after what a, after runs like that, gash and getting gashed for runs like that does in the passing game. <clears throat> because now these guys' his eyes is on Barber coming full speed at him. And then not paying attention to these fast and physical wide receivers we got getting downfield, getting open. And, and your eyes start focusing on other people. And, Tony, the touchdown play was kind of Ryan Smith's fault and Chris Conti's fault. Uh, this tape is – I hope everybody don't see this because they're going to tear Chris Conti up when I pull this up, and you wouldn't even know. Um, but, yes, the game plan against the Eagles – 
Ah, let me see. Let me see. It would be. I would throw a lot of screens on this defensive line here because it's going to be very aggressive coming at us. Um, but I would throw some uh, running back screens. Uh, you definitely got to establish the run. Fletcher Cox is going to be coming like a bat out of hell. And then Brandon Graham's going to be coming off the edge. He's going to be going up against um, Damar Dotson, so I feel good about that. Um, <clears throat> and Donovan Smith should be able to hold his own against um, the power rushers that are on his side. We don't really have speed rushers on that end besides maybe Chris Long. And Chris Long comes up to the right, so that will be against um, Dotson too. Um, and so what I'm happy about is uh, – Donovan Smith's not going to be having to go against too many um, speed rushers on his side. They're good pass. They're good pass rushers. It's just, are you a bull rush guy or are you a, uh, like a speed rusher? Like a Robert Quinn is a speed rusher. Uh, these guys are more bull rushers um, with the rookie that they picked up out of Tennessee last year, and um, the pick the Michael Bennett and things like that. They'll be on that side. But yeah, it would be screens, um, establishing the run, um, <clears throat> get for some short passes, uh, s slow up the defensive line, uh, the, the pass rush, so you can get the balls deep. Um, don't be predictable again on offense, which we weren't. We did a great job of that. Um, make sure I'm getting all you guys' comments here. Uh, they did a good job of that, not being predictable and uh, moving the ball pretty well down the field and out. Uh, and then on defense, uh, stop the RPO, run pass option. That's pretty much what they're going to be our offense. You know, everybody's going to talk about, oh, the Philly special, blah, 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 whatever. They, I'm sure they have different variations in there. They'll have their own variation this week against us <clears throat> to see what we're weak against. The Saints don't really run too many jet sweeps uh, to get caught on to that, so we'll see. And it's the first home opener. Looking forward to that. Um, but, yeah, establishing the run. Uh, setting up the guys again, getting deep, holding the line of scrimmage. It's going to be very tough this week with a, with the offensive line, you know, remastered with, with us and uh, no turnovers. Don't give them any turnovers. Make that defense earn everything. What do you guys think? All right. Let's get to my favorite part. Film session. <laughs> now, Let's see how this works out here. Make sure I got everything right. We're going to go back to the Saints game, and I'm going to show you um, plays there and all that. I'm not going to try to take too much time on it. If there's any issues um, with the viewing, please let me know so I can try to correct them. Um, Jay, if you're still there, uh, keep me updated. Going on, so let's 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 hit the film session. This is going to take the screen, so you have to look at my glue mug no more while we show this. All right, let's add this to the broadcast here. I'm gonna take myself down. We'll get this running here.
You said there's no audio. I hope there's audio now. So on this play here, thank you, Keith, for letting me know there was no audio. <clears throat> I said we want we want ten twenty six um, is the time we want here. Since there's no audio, I'm gonna have to run it this way. We get the first down here, <clears throat> so it's. A play before that, we got a nice run by Peyton Barber. And then with short, yep, 1026. Now we've been running the ball here, so now we're coming on this shotgun. Mike Evans out wide. <clears throat> you got a twins, twins open. You got a H back down to help pass protection. Um, let's see what happens here. They're moving down to the safety. He's moving down in the box to help against the run. Hit the play back, the play action. And you see how that froze that safety that came down in the box because of the run? Deshaun Jackson's already by him. Your eyes are going down in the running lane, and the result is a touchdown. And that and that's the effects that the running that, that running the ball has in football. Even you know how big or how small that, that just has the effect, and that happens against us too. So now, I know we want four twenty. We want four twenty-five. We want four twenty-five here. When it's a Peyton Barber run, is what we're after. I believe we stopped the Saints offense here. Sorry about earlier in the audio. I wasn't sure. Still testing this thing out with video, so now I got to show double. Field goal. 425 here. So 425 here, um, we're going to check this out. What you're going to see is Peyton Barber on the run, and then um, we're seeing how you get to see how these runs affect the passing game. So what you saw there was a four, um, first down run, big run, 25-yard gain. And so we're now we're going to go another Peyton Barber run and see how this, again, how these runs set up passing later on.
And you see, those are examples of why the run uh, can set up the pass. And those those little runs like that. Uh, like I said, I'm still going to work on this audio thing here, the film session. Uh, this is what I'm hearing is that you're not getting audio as I'm talking. So I'll figure that out. <clears throat> no big deal. I wanted to show you one more thing that everybody was talking about. Um... Everybody was talking about Carlton Davis getting beat all the time, but it, it's a little more to it. It's crossing routes and and getting separation on on. It's just just being an experienced quarterback and and figuring out ways to get the ball to receivers and things like that. And this is just an example of one of them, one of those examples. Uh, it's 50 seconds left before the half. Um, 57, yeah, it's 57 seconds left before the end of the half. Saints get a nice play to Michael Thomas. And this, the Saints just do what they do. And that's make plays. So let's check this out. I'm going to go full screen on that again. Take myself down. As you saw in the play, Michael Thomas ran under the crossing route and separated himself from the from the cornerback. Watch again closer. And that's just things that the Saints are going to do. Now with the audio, that kind of sucks. I wanted to show you some uh, run pass option stuff with the Eagles. Um, but with the audio stuff, it's going to be kind of hard for me to, to explain really while it's playing, but I, I don't have a problem pulling that up, um, and showing you again, like I said, I wanted to talk about a bunch of, uh, <clears throat> to talk about a bunch of football stuff and film and things like that. And I'm going to get better at this so you guys can see it, see it clearly and, uh, move in. Give me one minute. You guys can still comment. I'm here. I'll answer, respond uh, to the things you're saying, and uh, we'll work on it from there. I wanted to go to – let's go to last week's game. We'll go to last week's game. We'll go to week one. E Eagles versus the uh, Falcons. And you're going to see a lot of RPO in this game as well. Run pass option. And most of it's done out of uh, Twins open formation. Eagles start off on defense. Let's go on this drive. Yes, the Eagles stuffed them. That swarming defense. Okay, let's go for it on fourth down. To them on offense. It was a pretty slow game at the beginning. Falcons come down, take three points. Eagles go to work in some good field position this time. So they're able to run their offense. And 
we go here. Here's an example. Run pass option. And this is what the Bucks are going to see all day long. I wonder if I do it this way, will you see it or will you have audio? We'll do my full screen. So th this is what this is what you're gonna see with the run pass option now with the uh, with the Eagles. So check this out. It's gonna be twins, twins open, running back in the backfield, run pass option to get the linebackers to bite down and open up the passing lanes. And that is a lot of what you're going to see uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. Stick your hand in the belly of the back, pull that out, and throw the ball. Throw the ball to receivers coming across. Live comments. Am I missing these comments? I think I am. Oh, Lord. Mr. Got any guys' comments? Let me scroll up. I'm so sorry. I was not seeing them. Let me scroll up. But I hope you guys got to see a lot of tape. I can work on the audio thing while I'm talking, while I'm narrating. Uh, let me grow up to your comments now. New software, Chris. Ah, it's just using a program and still learning the, the kinks out of it. Uh, I got to figure out how I'm going to get audio from this to that. Like I said, a little practice will do. Um, he said, "Touch on the on the D on bro. Touch on our DBs as a whole. We're hurting bad right now. It was against the Saints. So I mean, if it continues all year, I'm not ready to throw in the towel after one game. Um, yeah, we do need to correct some stuff, but I'm just not ready to throw the towel in yet, uh, Mr. Hondo Lopez. Chris, I'll you know, I know your computer savvy. We'll talk about that later. I'll show you what I'm using, and we'll get through that." Uh, Mondo it would be nice to shut out the Eagles. Any shout out would be on Eagles too. Being how I spent a lot of time, um, uh, Mondo in Philadelphia, I would love that. I already got a, a bunch of bashing from uh, <coughs> uh, from Philadelphians when I was there. Uh, thank you, Billy. This is a new thing Blake is trying, so please bear with it. Yep, thank you. I knew if you only threw five TVs like Jameis, uh, yeah, Jameis threw five touchdowns against the Eagles as well. People forget that. Um, I said, Dylon Dash, Dylon Nash, y'all should keep Fitz in. It made Jameis look bad. I don't know. Jameis didn't play bad in 2018 yet, and he looked good all preseason. But if you're talking about previous years, I mean, last year, Fitzpatrick threw a lot of interceptions too. So the only time that will work is when you take yourself completely down. Yeah, thanks, Ando. I appreciate that. I didn't see those comments at the time. I guess I was focused on trying to get it, <clears throat> but I'll figure it out. I'm a Saints man. What the hell happened? <laughs> All right. Volumes off the videos. I saw the X. Uh, why am I moving that? I'm trying to move this. Uh, I use the videos. I saw the X. No audio. Silence is golden. <laughs> oh, the, I didn't even show that play. Uh, if you look at if you look at the uh, the play where. Uh, it was in a goal line situation. I wanted to show that play. You guys make me want to show it, but I don't have no audio on that to show you. It it was a uh, it was second quarter with ten fifty five left in the in the half. <clears throat> no, 
no, with 59 seconds left in the half, uh, they came out with the uh, the twins formation, the trips formation, and motion and receiver back to the other side. Uh, <clears throat> we have Vernon Hargraves coming on the blitz. Drew Brees saw that and sent them both on crossing routes. And um, uh, Evans was in the inside, and uh, Ryan Smith was on the outside. And and uh, Evans took the in, the underneath receiver, and Ryan Smith uh, took the over receiver. But it, well, he didn't take him; he left him open. That was Mike Thomas that was open in the middle of the field. What you did notice, and what I did notice, was Chris Conti was covering air, and he was literally chopping his feet, staring at the quarterback, not covering anybody. You know what? I'm gonna show it. Jay, bear with me. Keith, bear with me. I'm gonna show this way. I did not see that. In the game, and you wouldn't have saw it either because, like I said, um, yeah, it's a major history. I agree, Kondo. You've been expanding the grow well here, supporting you. Yeah, you guys always do. I appreciate it. Um, check this out. Give me a second. I'm not, I'm not doing it yet. I'm gonna show you the second half. I gotta go back now. You guys make me want to show the Chris Conti, and and, and I, I've been giving the guy a break too. On us uh, on situations and stuff like that too, but uh, that was on him. And like I said, when I bring it up, I'm not gonna have any audio, <clears throat> but I'm gonna pause it on a situation and uh, circle around it so you can see. Uh, all right, let me go to put it on here, put it on full screen, so when I go it to you guys, um, it'll be ready. Second quarter. Go down to 50 seconds. 50 seconds up should be like right before the end of the half. Six yard touchdown. Yards have to catch nothing. All right. So I'm about to go. I'm about to go uh, full full screen with this. So <clears throat> bear with me here uh, when I when I when I bring this up because I'm not going to be here and you're not going to be able to hear me. So. Maybe he needs a Snickers. Well, I don't know what he's going to change to. Usually when you get somebody a Snickers, they change to everybody else. Is it going to be Ed Reed in disguise? Ed Reed's kind of light-skinned. All right, here we go. So bear with me for a second. I'm not going to have any audio. Watch the video. Chris Conti is going to be, if you can see my, my no, you can't see my mouse. You'll see it when I go full screen. My uh, Chris Conti will be on the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to pause it on the coach's cam, and you'll see him literally standing there chopping his feet. When you watch the video, he's going to be on the on the, on the the right side of the screen. So I'm going to come down. You're not going to hear me. So let me do it. Wait. I just figured something else. Can you guys hear me even with the full screen? Can you guys hear me? Is that a thumb up meaning yes? Johnny Dean, welcome. Somebody let me know. Can can you hear me right now with the full screen like that? Oh yes, I figured it out. <laughs> All right. That makes me happy. Yep, thank you. I figured it out. Thank you, thank you. And it was a simple fix. I ain't gonna tell you what I did wrong. All right. But I do gotta go out to another screen to show you this because I don't want to be flipping. Well, you can hear me, so it doesn't matter anyway. All right. 59 seconds left. Now you guys see this? All right. <clears throat> you see the twins down? It's trips, and then the receiver motions. So we slide. That indicates we're in man coverage. Hargrave showing way too early. Drew Brees, this, this, is, this is a difference of when you see veteran play veteran quarterbacks versus John. Look, he puts his hands on there to let to make you think that he's about to snap the ball, but he's not snapping the ball. Oh, look at that. And then pulls back. You see him. Now he knows it's a blitz and it's a crossing route. He goes under and zags out. But look at the look look where Chris Conti is. If you look to the right, look look where Chris Conti is. Who is he covering? And his eyes is on the backfield. Kamara is, is on the ground in the backfield. That's Kamara where you see the white jersey on uh, on the ground right here. That's Kamara chop blocking. So you're not going to cover a back out the backfield. And then he runs back. Oh, crap. That was my guy. Right where you should have been standing. Touchdown. So now we'll look at the other view here. Kamara switches sides. 
We send the motion to receiver across. Indicates we're in man. He, you see Conti put his hands up. Man, man, man. Nobody there. Tapping his feet. There's nobody there. So that's the kind of stuff that he's got to work on. He's got to. You saw that, right? They say he's standing there chopping his feet, staring in the backfield. <clears throat> the receivers are running behind him wide open. And then that's on him. That stuff. Uh, and I guess I've been, you know, Cutter's been defending, but that stuff of stuff will get us beat against a elite quarterback as Drew Brees. Was there anything else I want to show you? I did want to show you a lot of RPO uh, with the Eagles and stuff like that, but I've wasted enough time trying to figure it out before. Um, lights were out. Lights were on, but nobody was home. Yeah, stairs didn't go all the way to the top, and that's the type of stuff he gets beat on. Yeah, Evan Lee, that's kind of pathetic. I mean, you saw him standing there chopping. Who are you? Who are you covering? The running backs on the ground. Pass blocking, and he's just standing there chopping his feet. I mean, you look good if you're doing a uh, Jane Fonda. I know y'all remember Jane Fonda. Um, standing there doing a Jane Fonda, getting warmed up before you work out, and the receiver running right behind you. Mike, um, <laughs> he said, Keep on going. You want me to keep on going? All right, I'll keep on going. What, what time are we at? We started at seven. Well, I did kind of start a little late, we're almost at an hour. All right, we'll go to the Philadelphia. Since you guys want to go on, we'll go on. We'll go to Philadelphia, RPO. Would you say Russell? I'm saying your name right. It's pronounced Russell, right? Fonda, you like that, huh? Jane Fonda. I don't like Conti, but that's a bam, bam play. Running back could have came out the backfield. That was quick. It was a normal play. It's it's I, I I can't really I don't know if you saw it is where his head is at his head is literally staring at Drew Brees it's not looking at Camara it's staring at Drew Brees now I would agree with you Rasul that he you want me to do it all right I would I would agree with you but he was literally staring in the backfield at Drew Brees and Camara it was pass block all the way and even even after had at even after the contact, at least let me see you bailing back in the coverage. Maybe Drew Brees adjusts the pass. Maybe not. But you, you knew you blew the coverage because you ran back after the play. So, and I don't, and I don't blame him for everything, but that one, it, it's, it's kind of him. Um, it's kind of him on that. All right, we'll do, we'll do Philly RPO. New RPO in Philly. Okay, so I am pronouncing it right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Of course, we're going to go into Q&A. So if you got questions and answers, <clears throat> I mean questions, I'll give the answers. Uh, go ahead and post those up, and I'll get to them. <clears throat> yeah, it's Philly week, so you're right. I got to do it. All right. We got to go to week one against the Falcons. <clears throat> and I'll go to uh, later on in the game when the, when the, when Philly, you know, is in their groove and they can run their offense fluently. I kind of started from the beginning of the game. Uh, they didn't really have a chance to get all into it. So let me get down to this. Philly's third quarter. All right. I don't even know where they're at right now, and I don't need to, but I because I can kind of tell uh, what's going on without even knowing. We're gonna get through this tape together. Thing I was good at in school was watching tape. All right, we're at full screen. And we're going to watch the tape. So you see a third and five ball on the 41. 
Scores six to three. Eagles are out. H back right. Sidecar right. Twins left. Hmm. Everybody's in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. If you want to count the slot in the box. What do you think they're gonna run here? Motion them across to help block him down. Oh, stick the belly in the so it's the ball in the belly. Oh, Philly special. I did not know that was the play, so don't I did not do that on purpose. Small woods in. You're gonna see this against the Bucks. Mm, stick the belly in the running uh, uh, defensive end. It's hauling down. Realizes the quarterback went past him. And it's first down, Eagles. Make everything look the same and then run something else. First and ten. Quads. Let's see what they run. They don't stick it in the belly of the back. I'm going throw it to the running back here. And throw it to the slot. Let's see with the formation here. Linebacker slide right. I think he should have went to Smallwood here. The running back was uncovered. Receiver fell down. A third down, second down. Third and 26. <clears throat> Sidecar right. Twins left. Right receiver tight to the right. With a tight end down there. I did not see the tight end. Move him down. Make it look like Philly special again. Stick the ball in the belly of the running back. And J.J. just does what J.J. does, is fight for extra yardage. Third and eight. A passing down. We got H back left. Tight receiver right. Sidecar right. Don't give it don't stick the bell the ball in the belly of the back. Mm, find a receiver wide open in the middle of the field. This coach's cam stuff is great because you get to see stuff you didn't see. You got the pass protection here. Like, see, on the 79, that's Gerald McCoy's got to win that battle. Force Nick Foles to throw a bad pass. And first down. Second and one, ball on the one. Same formation. I'm thinking RPO here. Send the motion. Stick it in the back. Just let him power his way for a touchdown. Run pass option. RPO. Send him the motion. Let him think they're going to give it. Two guys missed the tackle. I ain't going to go too much longer than that. wanted to show you guys. That's pretty much what you're going to see on that. Uh, I'll, I'll go on a little bit on the defense here. You see this? 4-3. Up down. That's Michael Bennett up top. That's uh, Chris Long at the bottom. They're in a run package formation. Look at the push of that defensive line. There's nowhere to go. Flex your cocks over the guard. That's going to be Caleb Benenock. He's going to have his hands full. Owns the line of scrimmage, makes the tackle while he's getting double teamed. That's Fletcher Cox. Um, obvious passing down. I think that said third down, I believe. There's some type of miscommunication. Get the line right. Matt Ryan has all day to throw, drops it in there. Good tackle. Um, <laughs> he said he was told there'd be cake. You guys are silly. Four six. Uh, I'm not sure on that. I think it was four three on there. I couldn't tell if that's a safety or not. Their linebackers are so little, Jay. I, it's hard to say. Everybody's going to these little smaller. Uh, this smaller uh, linebackers these these days. 
Uh, what's been covered? Don't want to ask any questions already gone over. Um, what are you talking about, Dean? And uh, what are you talking about overall what's been covered? I, I got everything posted. I don't, I don't know if you saw it or not. Uh, a lot of it, I was just going over game tape and stuff like that after we talked about everything else. And I wanted to touch on the Saints and the Eagles and stuff like that. Um, it's already been over an hour. I'm not going to keep going much longer. Uh, appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, that was a great experience. I figured out how to get audio with that. <clears throat> I can see if I can get you, see if you can see my cursor on there too, so you can see where I'm pointing at while, while I'm talking. But it, most of it, it was pretty good. Um, Bucks better bring the D and slap the Eagles offense. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's going to be a tough game. Absolutely. Uh, Dean has left the building. <laughs> Not my main man, Dean. Um, 2024 Bucks. Yep, thank you, guys. Um, uh, I love doing this. It's fun. I'm glad we got through that together. So now I know what to do next time. So we do uh, the breakdowns and all that stuff. So that's fun. So we'll end this as we always do. You're the master of everything. What you do with your life, what you do with it is entirely up to you. Thank you, guys. God bless. And stay with Bucks Report. Stay with Buck and Blake Sports. Uh, Bucks Report, very supportive of everything. And are always looking out for each other. It's a great brotherhood here. Again, make sure to check out for the raffle for the signed, authentic Quan Alexander jersey with a uh, stamp of approval on it. I will post the pictures. And uh, there's only 25 tickets available. Again, check out Lids. Check out the Rat Pack Sports Show with Derek Jones and the Sports Arena. Um, and we'll see you guys uh, maybe on Tony's Take. I think I'll be on Tony's Take Tuesday. I'll let Tony run the show. Tampa Tony, Triple T, Tampa Tony. That's two T. Terrible Tampa Tony. Yeah. Tough Tampa Tony. Yeah. That works. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Go Bucks. Fire those cannons. Uh-oh. Me right, Armando. You got me right before I was about to hit it. Quick question. Are the first three games the toughest? Thanks, Wager. Got you up here live. Uh, I'm going to call you here in a minute. Taco, Tampa Tony. I like that. Let's stick with it. Um, what do you say? Stay tuned live. A Bucks report live show. Yep. Oh, Peter Blake is here. I didn't know. I didn't know I was in the, in the presence of greatness. Um, what did you say? Uh, you said your final question is the first three games the hardest. I didn't believe so. Let me take that down. I'll be lying. Yeah, I was concerned with the first three games, but then, as like I said, I told everybody before, you can't judge everything right away. It you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen with injuries, suspensions, anything. And look at Big Ben's playing horrible. I think he still has a concussion. To be honest, I don't think he's fully recovered. They have a suspect offensive line. Le'Veon Bell's not there. Uh, their offense looks like it has no continuity right now, and this is a good time to catch people when they're not ready, especially these three hard opponents. You got the Saints. They slept on us. Uh, the Eagles are banged up. Uh, they don't have their players, and, you know, they're not whole. They barely escaped the last Thursday night against the Falcons, who played also really bad. So, yeah, they were the hardest, but honestly, it's hard to tell. Later on in the game, some teams can click on. And and get ready and you know get in sync later on in the year. So it's hard to tell, but you never count anybody out, and that's why I said we should never count ourselves out or nothing like that. Um, the biggest stick is here, baby. Yeah. All right, guys, let me get out of here, man. You guys are crazy. We love to bring the Peter, but bucks at bucksreport.com. We put the B in bucks. Goodbye.